We're finally here. It's grand final week of the Women's National Basketball League. The Bulleen Boomers and the Dandenong Rangers are going to do battle this Sunday afternoon at the cage. Laurie Chiswick is joining me once again, and Laurie, welcome to you. How exciting is this? Well, Darren, a grand final week, like you mentioned, shouldn't we have balloons or banners or at least a bottle of champagne here chilling to celebrate? It's just fantastic. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to get on to Catherine Murphy about that, our producer, and uh, obviously known to everyone at home as our newsreader as well. I'm not sure what she's doing, but anyway, maybe she's dropped the balloon somewhere. But anyway, look, it's the first time since 1987 that we've had two Victorian sides in the grand final. Um, that's more a historical footnote because the, the competition has changed so much. But I think we can say that on the strength of the performances over the last couple of weeks, the, the two best teams are in form at the moment are in the grand final. I, I would agree totally. I mean, I think Adelaide have had a wonderful yep. season. They just didn't have form at the end of it at, mm. the, at the wrong time, you know, Susie getting injured. But certainly Danny Nong, the informed team. Unbelievable. They've won eight wins in a row, including this one. Let's have a look at the highlights from the preliminary final on the weekend where they trailed the Adelaide Lightning by 13 points. At, uh, with a minute gone in the third quarter, Laurie. Uh, Joe Hill had got injured in the second quarter for Adelaide, their captain and one of their inspirations. And I think that probably hurt them down the stretch. But I tell you, I would not have expected the turnaround. When Adelaide led by 13, I just thought they were home. Well, and the thing was, Darren, it was the way they were leading. They were certainly leading in the rebounding count. Yep. Offensive rebounds at halftime, they had doubled Danny Nongs. And it was all those little effort things. And they, they really looked like they were going to steamroll ahead. But... As Jen O'Hay men, you know, mentioned uh, in previous interviews, that they, they are a second-half team. They come from behind, and they've done it over and over again. They really have, and I think the X factor for them was Teagan Cunningham. She came on off the bench in that third quarter, and she had 10 points in the third quarter. For me with her, you know exactly what she's got to do. She's got to catch the ball, she's got to shoot it. If her shots go down like they did on Sunday, she can be a match winner. If they don't, Maybe the result might be a little bit different, but gee, wasn't she brilliant? She was, and she found herself open and shot with such confidence. And and Adelaide had to help when Kathleen McLeod was yep. driving, or, or Jenna O'Hay, and and uh, you know trying to take away their their options, and that left her open, and she took full advantage of it. They didn't take away too many of Jenna O'Hay's options. We're going to have Jenna and Rachel Jarry in the studio coming up in a little bit, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But Jenna, twenty four points nine rebounds, eight assists. That was a pretty handy performance. Well, and it, it was her second half half performance, yeah. Darren, that really impressed me that uh, she started off on fire, was a bit quiet in the second quarter, and then the poise, the leadership, just her smarts on the court and, mm. and the way she handled um, her own shot and her shot making and distributing the ball was fantastic. So they ended up winning by 13 points. It was uh, from that point that I mentioned early in the third quarter where Adelaide led by 13, it was a 66 to 30 run that Danny Dong went on. I mean, it's just unbelievable stuff. Um, but before we leave that, uh, you've already mentioned, Laurie, that Adelaide were the benchmark all season. A final word on 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 their year, I suppose, and also uh, looking ahead to what might happen next year. And, and hopefully, well, hopefully they'll get a lot of the same team back. We know Susie's back. Well, uh, and they would want to, I mean, I think Joe Hill would probably retire, and mm. I'm not sure what Jennifer Screen will do sort of after the Olympics. But Again, it, you know, it's a steep learning curve, but not at the, not at the right end to, to have that curve be happening. But uh, they will be really disappointed. Um, they've had a great season, though, and to, to remain at the top for so long, really, mm -hmm. virtually throughout the season, is a credit to them and to Peter Buckle and the way he put that team together. Yeah, they are a classy outfit. Unfortunately, losing in straight sets in the finals. The first top-placed team in 10 years not to make a grand final. But afterwards, as I said, they're a classy outfit. Susie Bakovic was good enough to speak to ABC Grandstand's Rachel Spawn. Lightning showed signs that you were back to your greatest chemistry and teamwork, but just couldn't hold it out for the, the rest of the game. No, nah, look, we came out in the first half and I thought we did a pretty good job defensively and getting the ball around and, and you know, trying to find the cheap scores, do, but uh, second half we, we didn't come out and do the same, unfortunately, and kind of lost our composure a little bit. And, you know, obviously they had um, too many scorers in double figures. And, I mean, I did a great job with 28. And, I mean, Cummings stepped up with 18, which is just not good enough for us, um, you know, to get over the line to let those kind of players score that many, you know, points. 
And this takes a shine off your own personal effort, 34 points, which is amazing. And you know, obviously you wanted to achieve that, but no, I guess not enough of your teammates were able to help you on the scoreboard. Yeah, unfortunately, we just one of those days, I guess, you know, and like the last two games that I, I had, I was sort of, you know, struggled a little bit and sucked it up and had a few weeks off and with my back and, you know, today I just sort of didn't want to leave anything behind and, you know, it wasn't that the girls didn't try, they did try, just things didn't go their way and we, you know, probably didn't follow um, the scouts so well in the second half, which is a bit disappointing, but, you know, it's a young group and you know, we just got to learn from it, basically. It is so hard because you did finish minor premiers and you had the two opportunities, two finals if you lose the first one, so it's pretty probably hard to describe how they're all feeling at the moment. Yeah, look, you know, we sat on the top of the ladder the whole season and to, to bomb out like this is, you know, it's it's a wake-up call, but it's it's also sad too, you know, we're, we're a better team than what we showed the last few weeks and, you know, if maybe if we, you can do your what-ifs, maybe, you know, last week maybe if we made a few extra layers. If I made a few extra layers, we wouldn't be in this predicament, but unfortunately this is what's happened and I guess it's a good learning curve, but, you know, I'd rather do what, you know, Dan Nong did, sit halfway through in the middle of the ladder and come out and now they, they're going to play the grand final. So, at the end of the day, as long as you stay top five and you know, do your job on the day, it's, it's anyone's game. Well, Susie, we've really enjoyed your performance over the season and you have signed for Lightning next year, so just have to look forward to that. But, well, you know, commiserations on today. Thanks, Rach. Congratulations to Susie Bakovic on a wonderful season, but commiserations to her and the Lightning uh, girls on their disappointing loss on the weekend. But, of course, now I've got to look ahead and talk to a couple of people who are going to be taking part in the big one. Strangely enough, it's going to be the third year in a row for both of them but this year, one of them is donning different colours. Jenna Rowe, hey, welcome back to WNBLI TV. Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, how does that feel? I know that when you were in here well, some months ago now, I asked you how you felt about playing against your old teammates at Bulleen, but now that it's in a grand final, does it feel any different? It does and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, we had a very special team the last two years at Bulleen, but um, this group, um, of Daniel girls, we've achieved some amazing things. Like we've won eight in a row, and um, you know we all get along so well, and it is really special. And Mark is such a passionate coach, and it's really fun and exciting to play with the girls and play for him. Okay, and I suppose that it's a very different Bulleen team as well. I mean, well, it's, that's another thing we spoke about. You're one of just eight players, or you're one of eight players who departed the Boomers at the end of last year for different reasons, whether it's retirement or to move on to other clubs. So yeah, it's obviously very, very different. Now, let's go back a step, okay? You talked about Mark being a passionate coach. Uh, we think, and also the teams have accomplished, the team's accomplishing great things. Let's go back to the game after Bendigo when you were eight and eight. You were eight wins and eight losses, and you look like for all money you were gone. It was round 13, you only had six games left. What has changed since then? You haven't lost since. I think half time of the Sydney game, yep. um, you know, we really had a, good talk in the change rooms and we knew that a lot of things had to change mm. and um, it was from that moment on that we really um, just came together as a team and our defence um, from that game onwards I think has been our trademark mm -hmm. and I think that's how we've been able to you know go on this fantastic winning streak. Was there something in particular that changed from a strategic perspective or was it more like you've described, just the environment, the team just sort of switched on? Because I think those of us that haven't been involved at that elite level of sport find it hard to believe that sometimes you can just flick a switch and, and you know, things just transform. In your case, a season can transform. We were a very um, new team at Danny Nong, a lot of new players, and I think it took us, um, you know, a couple of really disappointing losses to really come together. And, you know, we were working hard at training, but yep. it wasn't always quite working on court. Okay. And... Um, you know, the you know, last quarter and a half against Sydney and on, it's just really clicked for us and the chemistry has been really fantastic and um, I think we've been enjoying our basketball together a lot more as well, which also always helps. Yeah, I think that's noticeable out in the court to me. You, you do seem to all be enjoying each other's company, enjoying the plays when they go well. And when we spoke to you on ABC TV after the game on the weekend, I think your first words were, or our first words to you, I think via Rachel Spawn were, you know, congratulations. You're just like, what about Tegan Cunningham? And the same week, so the week before, and Krista Phillips was the best player on the court or one of the best players on the court. It seems like you're all finally starting to get your role. Absolutely, and I think it did take us time to develop those roles. Um, you know, Tegan, I think, could start on pretty much any other yeah. WNBL team, and she's um, coming off the bench and just being a fantastic spark for us. Krista Phillips, I think, took a while to find her feet in the league mm. and adjusting to the referees and the style of play, and, you know, the last couple of weeks, she's just been enormous for us. And earlier in the season, if she did get those three fouls early, she might have been fouled off pretty quick, and we'd have to, you know 
finished the game without her and now she's staying in the game and um, it just makes such a difference for us as a team. All right, I do want to talk about the grand final and Boleyn's strengths, but first I've got to ask you, what on earth were you thinking when you were 13 points down two minutes into the third quarter in Adelaide on, uh, on last, last Sunday? <laughs> I think, you know, um, we seem to do that every week. Yeah, we okay. make it extremely difficult for ourselves and we have a lot of faith in each other and we knew we just... Susie ran rings around us in the first half and we knew if we could limit her somewhat, then we were in for a shot and, um, you know, luckily she, you know, we started triple and quadruple teaming her and um, we were able to get some stops and then Tegan comes on and hits some fantastic shots and, um, you know, even Brittany comes on for a minute and scores a clutch basket for us and, um, you know, once that happens and the passion ignites and um, there's no stopping us once we get like that. All right, so how are Boleyn going to stop you or how are you going to beat them? You know, they're a tough unit. Um, Tom Maher is one of the best coaches in the world and, mm -hmm. um, you know, he'll have the, his girls ready and raring to go and they've got a girl who's six foot eight in Elizabeth Canbeach and that's never going to... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, it's going to be tough, but, you know, we're going to play our team defence like always and stick yeah. to our rules and um, just grind it out like we always do. Okay, final one. The difference between Tom Ma and Mark Wright as your coach coming into a big game like this, what can you say about that? Look, I think their experience levels in a grand final are vastly different. Yep. Tom has been in seven or eight grand finals and has won six or seven of He's those. He's been, been in nine and won eight, I think. There you go. Yeah. Um, I don't think Mark's coached in one no. just yet. Um, so I'm sure there'll be a few nerves on Mark's behalf. And um, But I think that excitement and, um, you know, the newness of it all will go in our favour, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, just we're pumped for the game and um, Mark is one of the most passionate, co passionate coaches I've ever had and it's just a joy to play for him and I just want to win for him really badly. Well, I hope, well, I'm not sure if I hope. I'm not doing what our producers at ABC <laughs> will think. I don't know if you've seen the game tape, but he had a couple of very positive swear words in one of your timeouts, which, was, which gave us a bit of a laugh at one point. So maybe his passion might come out. But Jenna, all the best. We look forward to a thrilling game on the weekend. Thank you very much. And thanks very much for joining us too. No worries. All right, the details are on the screen now of the grand final. As Jenna shuffles out, we're going to uh, substitute in uh, Rachel Jerry from the Bulleen Boomers but of course these are the details you can get your tickets through Ticketmaster we're expecting a sellout we're expecting the cage to be rocking as it has been the last two years Sunday afternoon at 3pm Bulleen against Dandenong so Rachel Jerry has been good enough to uh, well glad, glad you could come off the bench Rach first time this season I think it's actually my second time okay <laughs> right <laughs> well I know it's your first time here your second time here but at uh, WBLI TV welcome back now you've had the advantage of hearing what Jenna's had to say uh, how do you think you're going to beat them um, you know there's different strengths on both teams but I think we match up well on each other and I expect another close game. We've had three close games this year. But, um, you know, Liz has run into form really at the right time, I think, and she's got her game face on and so focused. So um, she always plays well against Danny Nong as mm. well. So I think, you know, she's going to be a massive focus for us. And I expect, you know, Danny Nong to collapse in and, you know, really make it hard for her. But, um, you know, and then we've got some other things. And having Sammy back, it's a huge yep. boost for us, so yeah. Yeah, okay, before I ask you about Liz, I'll ask you about Sam. How's she moving? We, we know that uh, she's had a you know, pretty, pretty poor injury, really. Bad timing with her calf injury. She, like, we were hoping she was going to be back for last week. She missed out. How's she moving on court? And I suppose what people would be more concerned about is maybe more at the defensive end where she's got to stop Kathleen McLeod, potentially. Yeah, for sure. Um, she's moving so well. Mm -hmm. I think the week off that she didn't have to push herself to get up for last week was really important. And um, yeah, she was doing sprints last week and she was she trained last night and she'll train again later this week and she's pulling up really well from everything. Yeah. So we expect her, you know, she's not gonna come out and play 40 minutes and that kind of thing, but she'll be a massive spark and she's such a leader on our team. Yeah, you could we could notice that even watching the semi-final. She was sitting right next to the coaching staff and she was right there contributing to timeouts, contributing in the huddles and as well as being a leader, uh, I suppose, giving that instruction. She looked like she was a cheerleader as well. <laughs> she did. I remember <laughs> at the... Right when Joey got that steal, she's going, yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's a great vision. That was yeah. really good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, Liz, you mentioned her game face and the fact that she's got it on. It's something that Laurie Chiswick spoke about during the game, uh, during the semi-final um, with ABC's broadcast. And 
it just looked like she was so focused and so different. You know her very well. You've played with her for some years now. Yeah. Do you see that change in her behaviour? Do you see when the buttons are pushed for her or is there something that, that Tom and, and the coaching staff can harness? Um, yeah, I think by Liz's own admission, she's had a pretty inconsistent season at mm -hmm. times and I think that's really played on her mind and she had some fitness issues earlier in the season. And um, But I think just as we've got closer to finals, she's seen, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, it's nearly there and that's sort of got her in focus and yeah, she's, get, she's back in shape and all that kind of thing. So I think you know, she's staying out of foul trouble a little bit as well, and yeah, it's good. Well, last year she guaranteed the premiership too, by the way. Uh, this year she's being a little bit more circumspect. There was an interview that went up the WBL website during the week where she's like, oh, if it happens, it happens and all that. Has somebody had a word to her? <laughs> or do you think she just thinks that this Danny Nong side are a much bigger threat than last year's Canberra side? Um, yeah, it's a loaded really question, mate. It's a <laughs> tough question. <laughs> um, someone's probably had a word to it. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, what about for you? It's the third time in a row for you, fourth time in a row for the club. It's only very, it's very rare that clubs have been in this situation. It's only happened, I think, four or five times in the history of the competition that clubs have been in this many grand finals in a row. Do you feel any sense of history or are you just sort of a one match at a time kind of person? Um, yeah, I'm a one match at a time kind of person, but it is huge for our club. We've got mm. so many, you know, volunteers and juniors and all that kind of thing, and it really is good to reward them. And, I mean, this is going to be my third grand final. Yep. I'm only 20 years old, so I feel really lucky to have played at such a successful era in the bullying club. Yeah, it has been, I guess, a really exciting period, hasn't it? And you've seen the change as well, because obviously, and we just mentioned it to Jenna as well, I mean, with Jenna and Elise and Hannah moving on at the end of last year to other clubs, and then, uh, you know, the retirements, the mass retirements of all those players that have been around forever, and, you know, Shah and Desi, Kylie, Anna, Shelley, I think I've remembered them all, uh, all retired. I mean, it was a... A huge transition and is there, what's been the feeling like this year? I mean, at the start of the year, did you say the goal is to make a grand final? Because I think a lot of us are, are just astonished that you actually have. Yeah, uh, we were... Uh, sorry, just to cut, just to cut in. Uh, <laughs> the talent's there, but we just weren't sure that, you know, that it could be harnessed so quickly. Yeah, I mean, we, we, it was like the unknown for us yeah. as well. We had so, we've got so many young players, so many players who maybe haven't quite made it at other clubs. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so, but we went away to China before the season and we had three amazing games over in China. We got one win, a draw and a loss, I think. But to win over in China, it's huge against their national team. So after that, we sort of had that belief that we can get to another grand final. And um, I think at times our belief might have wavered, but mm. really after Christmas, I think we had a few really amazing wins and that belief came. And when Sammy was out, we had really two gutsy wins up in Queensland yep. and that was um, I think amazing for some of the younger girls confidence. And I guess to know we can do it now I suppose and I guess you'll take that belief in on Sunday well uh, and, and look good luck we, uh, we hope it's going to be a thrilling game and if it does come down to the last shot as it did a couple of years ago who knows maybe I love it you, when you, mention that. you probably want the ball back in your hands I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, good luck. Thank you very much you. for joining us again. Thanks. Rachel Jarry there, one of the stars of the Bulleen Boomers, and we're really looking forward to the grand final. Laurie Chizik's going to be back with me in a minute to provide her final thoughts on the match. But before we get to her, I should remind you about the Basketball Australia presentation evening, which is coming up on the 26th of March at the Crown Palladium. The WNBL MVP, the All-Star Five and other award winners will be announced on that evening as well as the NBL awards um, at the same time. Make sure you get in contact with Basketball Australia to get your tickets for that event. It should be a ripper. Well, Laurie, thanks for uh, rejoining me again in the host position. And look, you'll be at that MVP, do you? are looking forward to that, I know. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of champagne there, Darren. <laughs> absolutely. Catherine Murphy might even snaffle a bottle for us. <laughs> but anyway, look, let's get serious again. You've heard what Rachel and Jenna have had to say about their seasons and about the grand final. Over to you. Break it down. Tell us how this game's going to be won. Well, I think they both mentioned some key players for them, uh, Krista Phillips and Liz Cambage. I'm mm -hmm. really looking forward to that matchup. I think you can look over the, the three games and probably say that Liz has probably had the ascendancy in those games. 
Then you look down to the other end of the court, Sammy Richards and uh, Kathleen McLeod. Mm. And I would say Kathleen, just purely because Sammy's been injured, will probably have the um, heads up on that on that matchup. So to me, it comes down to the, the two ladies that were actually in the room here, Jenna and, and Rachel, and I think they'll be guarding each other. Mm. And so that that to me could be to the key to the game can can rachel stop jenna because she is a a machine out there certainly jenna i don't think will have the luxury of posting rachel up as she does with often with mismatches well rach rach played susie back of it last week remember so it's exactly, kind of, you know a different, exactly. different scale yeah so you know and then again i think the coaching the coaching situation is mm. interesting too the fact that tom does has a vast amount of experience and mark Mark doesn't. Krista Phillips hasn't been in this situation in Australia. Yep. Um, Alison Downey, I'm not sure whether she's been in a grand final. She was involved in the two Dandenong flat championships, but I'm not sure that she was, you know, part of certainly part of their, their key rotation. So it will be a different experience for her. But then now you have Alice Kunick, who is who is starting and playing, yeah. and she, while she was involved in the those previous grand finals, you know, the, she didn't play significant minutes. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. One thing I'll just ask you specifically on the Rachel and Jenna, or the, what we expect will be the matchup. We know that Jenna can score. 24 points she had last week. She dominated the grand final two years ago against Canberra when they lost. Um, last year she was hurt and didn't have a massive impact. But I suppose the question that I've got is from a from a basketball perspective, how do you stop Jenna doing what you describe as the unstatable things? You know, getting around screens, running to position, and even some of the statable things like controlling the game with her passing ability. Well, I mean, that's why she's such a complete yeah. player and she is very hard to defend and you, you have to know that she's, once you've taken away her shot, she still is a, 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 a lethal passer. Mm. So you've got to get up and carry your hands and, and not be able to let her see that, you know, pinpoint accuracy and, and make those passes. So she's an all-round player. You have to play her honestly. Um, Boleyn certainly, I'm sure, will have all their scouts, both coaches down pat, and mm. you know they're switching how they're going to combat some of those things um, so that she doesn't have good passing options out there, but um, it'll be certainly a tough assignment. Okay, who's gonna win? <laughs> tell us, look down the barrel there, Laurie, and tell us who's gonna win. Well, I knew this would come up, and <laughs> you know, it's uh, I'd love to sit on the fence, but I know I can't, and uh, you know, Danny Nong is, is definitely the informed team. They'll come into this really on a roll. Um, however, I am going to go with Boleyn. I'm going to go with Boleyn because uh, they've had that grand final experience. Their big guns have in um, Jerry and Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge, with her game face on, I think is pretty scary, pretty mm -hmm. unstoppable. And also, I think the experience of Tom Marr um, could just get them over the line. But I just expect a very, very close contest, Darren. Yeah, thanks, Laurie. And I do we get a tip it. from you? Uh, well, uh, no, all right. come on. Okay, okay. Uh, I, too, am going to tip the Boomers in a close one. I think we've had most, grand, the majority of grand finals in WNBL history have been decided by less than 10 points. And I think that this one will be as well. Yeah. At the start of the year, after seeing them in round one, I actually said to you after our TV game, I said, Bolina win the grand final if they stay fit. And I think, and even at the start of the final series, I said, uh, be, before Sam Richards got hurt, I said the same thing. Um, and I feel like with her coming back into the lineup, that will be enough for similar reasons to you. Uh, I love watching them play, but I think it'll be a wonderful game. Danny and I have been a joy to watch over the last uh, six or so weeks as they've gone on this eight match winning streak. So is that definitive enough for you? That, that's, that's fine, Darren. <laughs> I think I had Boleyn and Bendigo, so yep. at least half mine is correct. Well, I had Bendigo before the season started as well. But anyway, <laughs> we'll let that one slide. But we're really looking forward to this one. ABC Grandstand will bring you all the coverage. Uh, for those in New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania, the match will be live at 3 o'clock. Unfortunately, due to the, the time zones in this country, uh, it's on 3 o'clock everywhere. But unfortunately, it might not be live where you are. But we hope you can get to the coverage and check it out. Um, WNBL Radio will also be providing a live broadcast if you download the Red Time Sport app for your iPhone or alternatively check it out on WNBL.com.au. It should be a ripper. Stay in contact with us on Twitter, Facebook and get your feedback to us and some thoughts as well, Laurie, because we'll try and come to that when we do our grand final wrap next week. Absolutely looking forward to this uh, this weekend, Darren. Should be wonderful. Thanks for joining us again. Can't wait for it. Bulleen and Danny Ong on Sunday. We'll talk to you after that. Thank you.